This is uh, an, an enormous body of, of work assessing all the science that's related to the impacts of climate change on human and uh, human systems, natural systems, and how society and nature can adapt to climate change. And it looks at the, the impacts that have already happened and the fu future possible impacts. And it also looks at this from uh, the opportunities for addressing. It's not just a, it's not just a bad news story. The, it's, it looks at it from a, if you like, a risk management perspective. How can we, how can we deal with this, with this problem? It's an enormous body of work looking at it globally, but also there's a wealth of regional detail. We don't just look at it as a global picture, but we zoom in on the different areas of the world. So this, this, we've in fact got two volumes, one looking at the, the overall issues, the global issues, and one looking region by region at how climate change is affecting different parts of the world. For the first time, there is a clear regional chapters with the analysis inside the individual regions and sub-regions because we know that uh, already climate change is occurring uh, at the local scale in many um, territories. Uh, so it has a, a, local, a local effect uh, as well as responses as to be uh, started to find at the local level. The current, uh, the current climate impacts uh, are documented uh, in this analysis of literature Confirm many sectors and, and specific regions are affected by climate impacts. Now, signals of impact of climate change are clearly detectable, even though considering the potential confounding factors like land uses, uh, overexploitation of resources. First of all, the reaction of ecosystems. Uh, animal species, vegetal species are changing, are moving. So there is a, a distribu redistribution of ecosystems. But what is interesting is that there are also some social and economic impacts that are already detectable. The impact with the, uh, an economic relevance. For instance, wheat yields are declining in some areas of Asia and also in, of Europe. Also, today, there are some uh, phenomena of water scarcity, which are clearly induced not by an over-exploitation or bad exploitation of uh, water resources, but because of uh, water scarcity induced by climate change. So when we are talking about uh, future impact, we should uh, briefly mention the fact that uh, the IPCC produced a new scenario building exercise, which is based on these RCPs, Representative Concentration Pathways, which uh, basically um, define different temperature increases and CO2 concentration. Let's have a look at the two extremes of these uh, RCPs. We have the 2.6, which is basically consistent with a, a situation in which we are more or less able to um, stabilize temperature increase at or slightly below the 2 degrees Celsius within the century, and the 8.5, which is the extreme in the other sense, is the more uh, pessimistic, if we would like to say in this way, uh, assuming that by the end of the century temperature could increase between 4 and 6 degrees Celsius compared to the pre industrial level. What is interesting to notice first is that uh, uh, until uh, 2040, basically the two uh, temperature profile coincide. So this is called the period of committed climate change. So whatever we are going to do today, more or less we are going to experience that. Uh, temperature increase. Because the climate system has some inertia which are very very hard and very, very difficult to avert. But this is also the period in which we need to act immediately to decide in which of the two branches we would like to place ourselves. The report identified the so-called reason for concerns. Each of these uh, um, is important because it involves many different aspects of uh, human welfare. This is the, these are overarching reasons for concerns. A first large area for concern is what is going to happen to ecosystems. And uh, the point is that uh, if we are going to lose ecosystem, we are going to lose biodiversity, we don't really know what could happen because this could have an impact on the food chain on health. Another one is the one related to uh, change in frequency and intensity of extreme events. 
uh, this can be extreme floods, extreme droughts, extreme precipitation. All these facts are very concerning because they influence negatively health, energy provision, provide provision, uh, this, um, our infrastructure. The third area for concern, which is something that this report emphasizes, perhaps more respect to the past, is the possibility of trespassing some thresholds, the issue of tipping points. And for temperature increases uh, close to 40 degrees Celsius above greenhouse level, this risk uh, of some abrupt change in uh, um, our living condition, like uh, for instance, uh, dramatic uh, ice sheet melting or some uh, re reverting of some global circulation phenomena is something that we have to take into account. And in this case, this would change completely the way in which we, uh, we live and we produce. The concerns are so scaled up from uh, uh, hot spots, let's say, spots where we do see today uh, problems uh, to the possibility that these, uh, let's say, uh, leopard skins of uh, events uh, becomes uh, more continuous, uh, becomes a regional change or even a planetary global change. That's at the scale where we are now pointing with, uh, with uh, scenarios of uh, increasing uh, warming. And another important reason for concern is the adverse distributional effect that climate change impact can have. In the sense that uh, weaker groups, uh, poorer people, poorer countries are more adversely affected and uh, they are less able to adapt. Um, they are more vulnerable. And this means that uh, uh, climate change impacts increase inequality. And there is the, the, the um, likelihood that this increase in equality is very, very large, especially in the second half of the century and could be uh, unsustainable. There will be any, in any case climate change, uh, even if we do everything we can, so there, there will be some kind of residual climate change. So in any case, the human society uh, has to adapt. I think the main message of this report is adaptation is needed now. So despite uh, any global uh, policy on mitigation or reduction emission of greenhouse gases, we need to adapt because impacts are going on and they will increase in some area. And they will eat uh, uh, industrialized country and developing country. And so we need to increase the resilience of this uh, country in the different sector to the future impacts of climate change. So adaptation should be seen as a part of our effort to go to a sustainable development of our society.